with regards to this book and, and maybe telling people how to get kicked off, what would you suggest as step one? Uh, obviously, actually, no, step two. Step one is read your book. We'll put it yes. out there, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna put that's the <laughs> dimension itself. Exactly. Read the book and buy uh, one for every one of your friends. Right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, well, there's there's a couple of things. So let me let me try to uh, frame this um, uh, because I think this is uh, really important. Um, the, the, the first thing, and you know, um, I've just recently become the academic uh, director of the spirituality mind body Institute at, uh, at Columbia. And uh, Congratulations. so we do, uh, research. We, we have a master's program there. So we help people learn about how to use the best scientific information we have for spiritual well being and spiritual growth. And, um, um, one of the things that I do when I, I teach my course in positive psychology there uh, is I, I try to help students recognize that uh, whenever we talk about an intervention to help you or those you're working with, it's important to kind of think of timelines, that there are interventions that deal with the past, there are mm -hmm. interventions to deal with the present. And there are interventions that deal with the future. So I'd mm. like to respond to your question uh, by saying that um, I think that there are very, very, very powerful ways to use that timeline to help people feel better right now. And the first way, I would say, is um, uh, each morning uh, when you wake up uh, to take literally two or three minutes mm -hmm. and do a gratitude review of the last 24 to 36 hours. Now that's a past intervention. What I mean by that is that good things have already happened. <laughs> They've yeah. taken place already. We're not trying to create something, look for something, fabricate something. They've already taken place. The difference is because of something known as the negativity bias, we skip over our good things usually. Um, but when we take the time to reflect on them, we're highlighting them, savoring them, and bringing them into the present. So if I were to think about yesterday, and I think about, well, what what happened yesterday? Oh, I had a, a, a really good session with a client where there was a genuine shift in, in there. And that really made me feel good, obviously, them feel, you know, that's yes. a gratitude. Well, it's already happened, and I might have moved on with my day and not really thought about it much. But in this uh, harvesting process, we're going back and harvesting the positive emotions that are in our immediate past. Uh, so I think that kind of intervention helps people um, very readily because we're not trying to create or fabricate something. Mm -hmm. um, does that make sense, by the way? Oh, absolutely. Totally. Absolutely. Totally. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Then the second thing I would say is much more about the immediate moment. And uh, one of the things I discuss in the book is all the research on something known as dispositional mindfulness, which mm -hmm. is basically you saying to you, catch yourself thinking. Notice what you notice, because every time you get a chance to see what your thoughts are, yeah. It gives you more influence over them. So just from time to time, asking yourself, what am I thinking about now? How yeah. come I'm thinking about that? And there's even a technique to distance yourself from it uh, a little bit so that you can get a little, you start with that perspective thing. So <laughs> I know it might sound strange, but uh, uh, on a regular basis, I'll say, I wonder why Dan is thinking that right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it gives me, perspective from myself you you use the third person and by the way that is not a like a little phony baloney thing that's an actually very well researched technique um yeah. uh, of distancing so that you you start seeing you uh from the perspective of a higher self or a uh true self or something like that yeah. um still within the present moment and i'm doing past uh, present and future, future right future, yeah. so the past about gratitude the present about this dispositional mindfulness but the other thing in the present moment is kindness um uh there, there's there's almost no downside to kindness uh, unless you're you know overly kind and as people are walking past you you're trying to tie their shoes or something that <laughs> might be a little much but but um uh kindness 
brings us into uh, a whole new space in the moment. Because um, one of the things about kindness is if I do something kind for you, mm-hmm. I feel good, you feel good. But through a process known as elevation, anybody witnessing what I'm doing is it's going really to feel good. just about as good as I being me or you. True. Now, that is really powerful because it means if you spot an act of kindness and acknowledge it, or engage in an act of kindness, or even receive an act of kindness, um, that brings you into the moment in a different way. Um, And then as as far as the future uh, intervention, Mm -hmm. I would strongly, strongly encourage people to engage in what I call micro goals. Uh, Micro goals means that, um, uh, you know, every person on the planet now has had their future altered uh, by the pandemic. Right. And Absolutely. it's been altered because uh, whatever plan we had to, you know, six months from now or three months from now has been radically altered. Correct. And because the information keeps shifting and there's so much uncertainty, um, we might not really be sure what we're doing two weeks from now or a week from now. So that means with micro goals, we recalibrate our goal to something mm-hmm. in the next 20 minutes. The, the next hour. Yeah. When, when I knew I had to be here with you for this hour, um, I th- this is all I'm doing right now. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not thinking about, you know, the 40 other things I got to do today or whatever. It's, it's, it's like, okay, this micro goal for this hour, I'm going to have a beginning, middle, and end. And what that does is gives us a level of engagement with the moment um, that uh, directly activates us see hope hope is bi-directional it's a two-way street yeah if i change my expectation about what i can influence in the future and then i act on that the action on that gives me feedback that empowers me to do that again so Mm -hmm. i get i can get it going from my belief system to the action and then back from the action to strengthen the belief system so uh that gives us a little something for the past of gratitude present gratitude um uh dispositional mindfulness and kindness and then micro goals for the future 